Hey, what's up, guys? In this video, we're going to be going over the dynamic EQ module in Ozone 7. It's basically what you get when you mate the equalizer and dynamics module together. And think of it as an EQ that dynamically uh, adjusts the uh, gain of that frequency um, dynamically. So let's uh, open it up. And uh, what I'm going to do is play a little bit. Right? And that. Uh, Spectrum is not what I like. So I'm going to open up the uh, Spectrum options here and uh, go Fill Spectrum and uh, Show Peak Hold. And you'll notice that it, uh, it's more of a pretty um, overlay. So uh, yeah, you have uh, eight bands that can be dynamically, um, you know, that <laughs> depending on what... Uh, uh, what kind of um, filter you have, it can be dynamically attenuated or um, raised. Uh, the cool thing about this is they really kind of planned ahead, is it has an auto scale. So the attack and release are changed automatically and dynamically based on what frequency you are adjusting. So up top, it's a slow attack and a slow release. And uh, naturally, as you go down to the bottom, it's a faster attack and a faster release. And this just it it does this because of the uh, the size of the wavelengths, and it just sounds kind of you know more natural and less apparent. And uh, well, transparent would be a way for us to describe it. And this is a little bit different than the dynamics. Um, the uh, multiband dynamics module here as it sounds more musical it doesn't involve a crossover and uh, yeah and this is the concept of what this is doing is how a deesser works so it's or a plosive um, in a particular frequency range um, you would set a very uh, narrow Q where the S is and then you'd have, you know, a fast attack and a fast release, and that would essentially eliminate that. And uh, what I like to use this for is uh, just kind of adding a, a, a high shelf and, uh, like, cleaning up uh, the high end and uh, maybe playing around with the low end a little bit. But, yeah, it's, it's a very, like, useful tool. And, uh, yeah, I'll give you an example here. So beginning of the the dorp I have uh, like a crash and a white noise thing going on right and my high end has always been a little bit busy so what I can do is I can bring this down you notice there's a little arrow down there it's kind of cleaning up the high end right here and kind of smoothing it out um, and the auto scale always kind of works and with the analog filter types, um, it's more uh, musical sounding uh, filters, right? So the proportional Q, uh, the default for, you know, bands that aren't 6 and 1, um, by default, kind of are like a, a conventional kind of Q uh, curve. Uh, you can have the band shelf, which is... It acts more like a band, say, a band in your dynamics. This is basically what it looks like, right? So it, it acts like that, so it's kind of like a hybrid, it seems. So if you have a little part here. Right, it shaves off that area right there. But what I like to do is uh, have one of those band guys here to just kind of clean up the bass a little bit in the low end and I'll always uh, turn it on and on or on and off and I'll bypass right and what that does is it, in my opinion is it well in my ears is it really cleans up that high-end like white noise and uh, evens out the track a little bit. This is really useful on, say, like if you have like acoustic music happening, 
and you have a, a vocal that's really like, you know, vocal and guitar that go from like quiet to loud in certain frequencies, or if you have like uh, sibilance in the high end, you can really scale in and uh, do all sorts of fun stuff. I'll show you um, another thing you can do. You can inverse this so the little arrow goes up. So this acts as an upwards kind of compressor guy. So this can add more dynamics and more punch, um, which is, you know, you can use it either way you want. If, if things are a little bit too intense, you can reduce in certain frequencies. Say if the kick in this range is like really punchy and it doesn't sit well, you want to have the, the kick in the bass at this band right here sitting right. You can do that or you can also add a bit more punch like So, even more intense, kind of. And this white line is what the actual EQ is doing. It's a dynamic EQ. We can add also another one, maybe inverse this guy here. The bass is a little a little flubby going in there, so if, if I kind of do this, and you, you always use these modules in conjunction with other ones. Well, you don't have to, but it's always a, a good idea. Um, and less is more, and uh, what they do is they just use a series of um, these plugins to uh, uh, get a desired um, polished sound. And uh, this is, you know, a matter of a few dBs, but it really adds up, as you can hear. And it's really useful, like, for, like, the build. It sounds like a bit more like in your face sort of thing just by kind of clearing everything up and it's uh depending on uh, what's going on in your track it changes anyway i've rambled on long enough that is the dynamic eq um and yeah i hope you uh, learn stuff take care and have a good one